family, love, heart, passion. There was a day where I think I straight when I was born, somebody brought a ball to the hospital and gave it to me. Obviously, I couldn't really hold it, but it gave me a ball to show that, listen, one day hopefully football's going to be your life. First thing I've ever remember, playing in the cages. It was a Wednesday night, and I remember going over there with my dad. He was playing against older players. You know when you're young, and then they, the players know what you're, you're about, like what you're capable of, but they don't really want to pick you because you're the youngest kind of you're the youngest one there. So it's like, all right, cool. You don't want to pick me. I'm away on the side. Then someone said to me, all right, Callum, come. I want you on my team. And they obviously thought, why are you picking this little kid? Like, what can he do? He's, I know what he's good at, but he can't do it against us. Then all of a sudden, I started getting the ball and just started dribbling for everyone and scoring. And they actually tried to like, tackle me hard and everything, but I was just going for everyone. Just kept scoring goals, and then all of a sudden, our team won. Then they said, nah, it's not fair. Start again, pick new teams. I want Callum first, and they started trying to get me first and stuff. That's the moment when I knew that. I'm going to get past these players because I, I just felt like confident. Now they, they just say to me, oh, you're not allowed to play. So they say to me, you're not allowed to play because it's unfair. But obviously they still enjoy it, let me play and still have a good time. Obviously dad was teaching me from young. He used to play so he still tells me from when he used to play the games, how he used to play. People, that like his friends used to tell me that how good he was, what he used to do as a midfielder. Ah. That whistle. <laughs> I remember that whistle for, for, for ages. It's like on the side of the pitch when you're playing, you just hear a <whistles> when you hear that you know like it's him calling you. Not calling you, but like he's trying to give you a message from the side to see like his perspective of the game. My brother was showing me the ways as well, so watching those two was obviously great from young. It's helping me not to who I am. The FA Youth Cup obviously gave me the recognition and helped me. But I think under 17 World Cup was just the, ch the changer. That was the turning point and stuff. The climate that which was playing in was a joke. It's like going in the sauna and you know when you open the door and you feel that like yeah, the steam just pushing to your face. It's like that but running every second. Every game was sold out. And obviously scoring the first goal for my team and you hear the crowd going, ah! I couldn't even speak to my teammates on the pitch, it was that loud, like, you heard, ah, screaming. And I think that was the first time I actually played in a big crowd in front of a massive stadium of people. Ladies and gentlemen, please... Obviously the final just was crazy. Crazy. We're in the final. We're losing two. How are we coming back? Everyone's just looking at each other at the time, we're just confused. This is supposed to be our year. We're supposed to come back and get our revenge on these. Why are we losing? I think we realised that we have, a, we have more energy and had more fitness than the, than the Spanish. We said to ourselves, if we keep in the tempo that we're playing at, we're going to score. And we, once we score one, we knew we were going to win. So as soon as Rian got the first goal, we was like, yeah, this is it, it's over. You know, see, to get a couple of assists in the game as well. Hudson Odoi, he'll get into the area here. Hudson Odoi, can they finish this one off? Yes, they can. And a goal ahead, there are seven minutes to play. Lati Bordier, yeah. it's into the net. It's pulled in. He's done it now. This day here would always like, stay with me because it's, the, it's one of the proudest days of my, life, my career so far. I told my mum and dad on the way, I've been picked for the first team. You just, can, you just see his teeth just grinning, like he smiles up to here. I was like, whoa, couldn't stop smiling. Mum was like, oh my God, Callum. Da -da -da, oh my God, son. Oh my days, you're doing so well. I love you, I love you.
The racial abuse that we all got, me, Raheem, Danny Rose was unacceptable. Hearing stuff like that, monkey chants and stuff is unacceptable from, for any team or anyone to hear, any player to hear that. Especially for me, for a young age, to be hearing stuff from the crowd saying you're a monkey or uh, uh, stuff like that. For me, it's, it's like, how can you even racially talk about somebody else and discriminate them because they're a different colour to you? I had to have a say in it because I heard it as well. I'm not going to say I haven't heard it if I've heard it straight up. When they're hearing stuff like that, it put me, to be fair, it put me down. It made me angry, more motivated to beat them and make sure that we win the game. When Raheem scored, then he did it. And they did that, obviously, what he did, the post about racism. I respected him for what he did because no player should ever go through discrimination. Like, you know what I mean? No one should go through racism. It's, it's not right, it's unacceptable. Just to get caught up so early at my at the age of 18 is so big and for my family to be so happy about it and the way they react to it, it was just a very nice feeling. It's like, I obviously want to keep doing them proud and keep making them happy. And if th this is what I'm doing, the job that I'm doing is making them happy and I'm enjoying it. Go keep going.